Alrighty, now we've got all of these incredibly wonderful papers. What do we do with them? Uh, you can do a collage, and I will show you a little bit about that later. But what I found that I loved doing was actually painting into them. And if you look at them, you can see so many different things in them. Um, I've done lots of workshops. Everybody sees something different in every page. But what I'm going to do is just show you the basics of how to create some things with your acrylic inks. I'm using the F&W Acrylic Artist inks here. And I also love using the Interference Colors by Golden to give it a little bit of a, a highlight. All right, we're going to start with this page, which is got, has got a little bit of writing still on it down here, and I'm not real happy with that. So I'm going to get rid of that. And the way that you do that is to take a piece of paper towel with your citrus salt and dampen it, and then just come in and blot. And you will notice that that is picking up the ink and smearing it around and getting rid of all of the writing that's, that was there in that space. And that just becomes part of the texture now. Okay. Also, if you wanted to create, say, I wanted this to be a snow scene, I would come in with a citrus salt on my paper towel and make sure your towel is clean because if it's got ink on it, you're just going to repeat the ink rubbing it back on there. Come in and you can actually remove the ink just like that and get another piece of clean paper towel. You can see how inky this towel gets. Come in, remove the ink all together and create what I would call a snow line down here. Now, I'm taking a little round brush. This happens to be my favorite. It's, it doesn't have anything on it anymore. I think that I've used it so much it's practically disintegrated. But it's just a small round, just a little one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my sepia acrylic ink, pick up some color, and I think what I'll do is start a tree right here. So a tree, I'm just going to come up with a straight line. Get some more ink on here. And what will happen is that the ink will stick in some areas and it will partially resist in some areas. So we're going to create a trunk here for this tree. And you can see, I think, how it resists in some areas and is heavier in some areas. I love that because it very much mimics what, what bark does. So we're going to come in. If you go over the lines, pay outside the lines, you can just get your finger in there and push that ink back. Okay. And we'll come down here and add a little bit heavier trunk into the snow. There we go. Like that. And then we'll come in and create some branches. And again, just be like a calligrapher. Come in and hold your brush up high and come in and just create lights of little branches. I get my um, inspiration by looking out my studio window. I'm real fortunate I live on 10 acres and my studio is upstairs and all I see are all these trees and mountains of the Blue Ridge. So it's very easy for me to create trees. Just a light touch. Come in and again almost like calligraphy. And we're creating all these little tree branches here and what happens is the citrusolve behind creates a kind of a texture, a foliage kind of texture that would be very hard to duplicate if you were trying to paint it. And that creates a very dimensional background, which is what I love about painting into these things. Um, when I first started, as you saw, the, the tree trunks were pretty um, one-dimensional. I've gotten a little bit better finessing them now. And you just have to play around with it and find your own personal style of how to paint into these. Now I'm going to turn this upside down and come in and do the other side because otherwise I get my hand in here and mess up my tree branches. And if I was really working on one of these things to complete it, I would take a little more time, but I'm not going to stand or sit here and have you watch me put every leaf on this tree. So we're going to just get right through this. Isn't that pretty? It looks just like a tree. And again, it looks like the fall foliage in there behind it is so cool. And it's a dimension that I don't think I could have gotten myself without having that textural paper that the Sutra Solve creates, which I think is very cool. Alrighty, now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add some, let's wash off our brush a little bit, I'm going to add some um, foliage in the front. And the way I do that is by splattering. And Jim, the cameraman, don't worry, we won't splatter you. Um, I was doing a demo one time on splattering and the way you spatter is to take your brush, hold it up here high and just tap it and it will splatter on you. You don't have to throw it across the room. Well I was doing a demo like that and it was a weekly class 
and my class was all seated around me in a semicircle here in front of the table and I said, don't worry, I won't splash you and I hit one of the ink bottles and it went right over on the lady in the front. While I was trying to demo, I just went, you know, <clears throat> and I was horrified. Well, the next week I came into class and generally the class would all be sitting there ready to go and and they weren't. They, they were up at the table, so I said, called them up, and they all sat down, and they were smiling, and I wonder what was going on. And as I started the demo, they got a big sheet of Visqueen and pulled it up like in a Gallagher show, <laughs> like I was going to splatter them, and they took a picture of that, so I thought that was pretty funny. All right. Anyway, splattering, once again. You don't throw it across the room. Just take your brush. I'm going to dip it into this, which is a scarlet red acrylic paint, and I'm going to tap it. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me some foliage in the foreground so it adds the dimension to this painting and again just tapping the closer you get and the more ink on here the bigger the mark is going to be if you want real fine marks get way up here and tap it and it'll be smaller type leaves and I like to put a couple colors I'm going to come over and put in some tangerine orange also tap that in and that's going to give us a really nice looking little foliage, the, like the last leaves of the fall that are coming in here. Now, I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to get my other favorite brush. This is my toothbrush and it's real old and it's just the best brush ever for splattering. I'm going to take one of these foam fruit trays that you get at the grocery store. And I'm going to take my white pigment and I'm just going to put a little dot of it there on the fruit tray so that I can get my toothbrush into it. Then I'm going to mask off my painting with a piece of paper towel so that I don't get white spatters where I don't want them, like that. And I'm going to come down here where we've got our snow and I'm going to give us a little bit of texture for the snow. And all I'm going to do is rub my thumb on this toothbrush over the area where I want the snow. Like that. And I got a little on the trunk, so I'll come back in and fix that. Just come in and add a little more sepia ink on the trunk. And you can see it has a little whisking of snow. Now, I sometimes I like to put it up here in the tree also, so I'm just going to make like a little snowfall is happening there. And then, just to give us a little foreground interest, I'm going to come in with my sepia ink and create a little bit of foliage up here just a teeny little plants that stick out of that winter snow. And that's how simple it is to create a tree with, uh, or a forest, or any uh, number of things with the citrusol. I think it's really beautiful, and each one is different. You can see this one's got a little blue sky on it. Sometimes I'll put mountains in. Suppose I wanted a mountain in the back here instead of this blue sky, which just happened to already be there. Take your citrusol on a clean piece of paper towel, get it damp, and then you can come in and actually, I'm going to erase the sky in a mountain shape. There we go. So now I have a mountain back there. And as it turns out, the sky, the, whatever's on the, on the back side of this paper was pink. So now it looks like a pink sky and a mountain instead of a blue sky back there. So you can do all sorts of things altering this to create landscapes and things that are just gorgeous. So there's your landscape. Now, let's find a waterfall. I'm going to look through here real quickly, see what kind of pages we've got. Some of the pages speak to you more than others for a certain type of thing. Um, let's see, this one. The rest of these guys can go over there and wait. I like this one for a waterfall because this looks kind of watery back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to come in and create a mountain range back here in the sky. And I'm going to do it just the way we just did. Take a citrus salve on your paper towel. And by the way, I, I tried this using Q-tips and things, and I found that paper towel is best of anything. Q-tips sometimes leaves little cotton fuzz on there when you're trying to erase. So if you just use a good high-quality paper towel, it's probably the best thing for coming in and, and reworking and erasing and stuff. All right, so I'm going to come in here. And you never know what you're going to get. Now, there's a pink thing. I don't know what that is. That came in there from somewhere. I'm going to erase the sky back here. We're going to have a sunset waterfall. OK. So now the sky has been erased, and I'm giving myself some, some little mountain forms back there with a sunset. How cool is that? 
All right, let's erase this part. There. Now I've got a mount, little mountain range back here, and I'm going to take my favorite little brush, and we're going to come into our white acrylic. Oh, I've got some here. We'll just use that. Get some white ink, F and W Artist ink, and I'm going to come in, and it will resist a bit. So I'm going to come in and quickly come down and streak in this waterfall. This is way cool. See how it's resisting a little bit here? That's the citrus solve acting against the acrylic. And I like that because it looks more realistic as far as the waterfall is concerned. So you come in and create your waterfall down here, the origination up in there. And then once again, I would take my magic toothbrush and come in and create a spray where the water hits at the bottom and maybe just a little spritz as it's falling off the mountain on the top. There we go. Sometimes I'll actually end up coming in and collaging some rocks down here, which is also kind of fun. And then, just to add some dimension, I'm going to come in and put a few trees up here on the top of the mountainside. And all I'm doing is just flicking in the pigment. You don't want to overdo it. Let the um, reader, your, the person enjoying your artwork, enjoy the artwork and figure it out for themselves. Don't say every pine needle or whatever. You can see it's almost, it looks almost kind of oriental, I think, in a way. So you can come in and you can place these little trees in here, whatever you want to do. And you have a mountain scene with a waterfall. And see how dimensional this is? It's magic how that all looks like rocks and things back in there. If you want to make this look like a little bit of a front rock here, just come in with your acrylic ink. Again, I love this sepia color and I can create a little foreground and then maybe have another tree coming up in there just to give it a little more dimension like that and you end up with something really beautiful. The last thing that I'm going to show you is uh, how to create a person with your citrus solve art. Um, I create people, sometimes they have cats in them, sometimes they have animals. Um, it's just really strange what you'll see. Um, Citrusolve themselves, the, the company, actually has art shows now, and I've juried several of them, which has absolutely been a delight. And one of my favorite people that somebody created was, there was a lot of sparkly, weird stuff. I don't know whether it was an atom exploding or whatever originally the picture was, but she had made a magician out of it, and it was absolutely stunning. He had a little cane and a little bird on top and everything. So anyway, what we're going to do now is create a person, and I'm going to start with the person, the, the dress or whatever being right here, because I see this line here. And what we're going to do again is take a paper towel with Citrusolve on it and remove the ink where her face is going to be. And I see this as a her because that's her dress, so there's guys that come out of these two. And all you do is you come in and again change out your paper towel because see the ink is on there and you don't want that being rubbed back into it so you have to change your towel out a couple times here. And we're just going to rub out the area where her face would appear. And I'm seeing this is pretty light so I don't know if you're seeing it or not so I'm going to do this one at the same time. This will be a darker image and again I see a gown or something here. So we're going to rub out the face here. That's better. Let's, let's work with this one for a minute. This one actually, some of the pages have kind of a, a white background to them and some of them have pink and we're really lucky because this is pink which is really cool. Okay, and so you can see where the face would be and then, oh, I'm see, I'm, boy, I'm really seeing something now. I'm seeing this, this image right here with a mink stole or something there, I know. <laughs> mm, too much citrus all. <laughs> okay, let's come in here. I'm going to get a neck going here. and. It takes a little bit of practice. You can't do this real quickly either. And again, change out your paper towel often. And we're going to come in and create the shoulder area here. Isn't this cool? Let's see. All right. Okay, so now I've got a face and a shoulder. Now I need to decide where the arms are going to be. And she looks kind of like a movie star or something to me. So I'm going to come down to her hand is going to appear right about there. So I'm just, again, I'm changing this paper towel out constantly. Here's another hand. This one looks like it's pointing out this way. So I'm going to come in and just get that inked out, ink out of there. 
All right, and that's just the beginning. Okay, we're going to finesse this a bit here. Now I'm going to come back with my very favorite uh, round brush, a little tiny one, like a number two or three, and start with the sepia ink. This is the F&W Artist ink. It's acrylic. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to give her face a little bit of a caricature. So here she comes. Get some hair in. Doesn't have to be sepia, it just seems to go with this painting with the colors. You can use yellows or oranges or I even have purple. We should have made her a purple hair lady. That would have been fun. So I'm just coming in and it resists a bit, which I really love. Okay, so here comes her face. Just that simple. I'll come down and create a neck for her and her shoulders, like that. Top bodice part of her dress is there. And there comes one of her arms down this direction. I'm seeing her dress as kind of coming in this direction here. You know who does cool figures, and they're they're not as concise as this. Um, they're more mystical as Bob, Mr. Bob Burridge. He does real cool figures with them. Okay. And then the other arm would maybe come down this direction. We can do some negative painting if we want to to bring out the back. What I would do with that is take a little bit larger brush. And again, negative painting is painting behind an object to bring it forward. So I'm just going to augment what's already almost a sepia color back here to bring out the figure a bit. And again, this pigment is resisting a bit on here and giving it a nice textural quality, almost like wood or something. And that will pop out the gown to the, to the front part. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my little brush. Got a little goopy there. And we'll come in and I'm going to do this quickly so it's not going to be my very best job, but I'm going to come in and give her a face. The nice thing about this is if you goof, which I never ever do, uh, you can come in quickly. Say we goofed on that, which I didn't, but let's pretend I did. You can come in and you can race it with the citrusol and come in and do it again. This is only good for a couple times because part, you'll start eating the paper up. But suppose we made a mistake, so now we can come in and we can do it again. Put in little eyebrows or nose or whatever you want to do here. Here's a little mouth area. Ink in some eyes. At, in my studio, I would take a little more time with this, but we don't want you to have to sit here all day. You have to go paint yourself because that's the whole point of this. So here's her arms. And then when I do the fingers, what I found works really well is to actually take your small brush, dip it into the citrusol, and come in where I've got the hand started. And we're going to come in and actually use the citrusol to bring out the fingers and the thumb. And you just have to come in and rub with your brush. And I'll just do a, a real quick thumb for you here. See where the thumb came out? Right there. Get a little more citrusol, keep it clean, wipe it on your paper towel, and you can actually draw with the citrusol real fine little points like that, like her little thumb there. So you can come in and you can create all of her fingers or little tiny points inside this, with your citrusol itself. We'll come in and create one over on this side too. And then I would go on to create the fingers too. So citrusol is magic in so many, so many ways. It's just so much fun to work with. And you can come in, you can even create little buttons on her dress or something. I'm being funny now, but I just want you to see how the citrusol works with the little brush work here. And then we'll dab that off. And now she's a clown instead. So that's how you create figures. And uh, again, the F&W Artist inks, the interference ink can be used. Um, I used the interference ink on this angel that popped out. This happens to be her little halo. And so I used uh, interference green blue. It's a golden product and it has a holographic effect. So when people walk by the angel, they kind of back up and look again because it's got that little glow to it. This one, I had a little bit of cat in it. Well, it's a big cat. It's called my big cat. So you can come up with all sorts of designs. This has the negative painting around it to bring the dress out, and this one has the positive painting to actually carve out the dress. So that's how I create figures. Thank you. <laughs>